All right, so welcome everybody. Thank you so much for taking some time uh, to spend with me tonight. I'm, I'm gonna throw a lot of things at you. Um, sit back, it's, it's, we're in for a pretty good ride here. Uh, I've been doing this Medicare uh, stuff for quite a while now. Um, we're very good at it. Uh, Ann has seen my live presentations. Um, and ironically, a lot of people from Groton Library have um, people who worked there have snuck in without me knowing and some of the board of directors did. And uh, the good thing is they, they allow me to continue. So that's a good thing. So here's what we're gonna do, okay? Quick agenda, understanding your Medicare choices. Number two, eligibility and enrollments. Uh, the advantages of Medicare Advantage plans, prescription drug coverage, agent assistance, additional resources, and why more in associates, okay? Um, as we start here, the biggest thing is under, um, step one. Everyone has probably heard what is original Medicare, okay? So very simply, med original Medicare is made of two parts. Part A, which helps pay for hospital stays and inpatient care. Part B, which pays for doctor visits and, and outpatient care. Um, and here's our the famous Medicare um, card. Does anyone know what's different about this card than a year ago? Anyone? All right, well, very simply, I, I, in the past year, year to 18 months, it used to have your social security number on there. They have now decided it was very smart to take off the social security number. And um, a little confusing for some of the um, people who've had it forever, but it's much better off with that social out of there, okay? So step two, after you enroll in original Mer Medicare, part A and part B, um, you have two different options, okay? Uh, the first option would be to get a Medicare supplement insurance. You'll hear it referred to as Medigap sometimes, and they're all offered by private companies. A Medicare supplement plan helps you pay some of the out-of-pocket out costs that original Medicare doesn't cover. Um, Medicare Part D is a, is a prescription plan. Um, so you can combine one or two of those plans together with your original Medicare, okay? Option two is what is called a Medicare Advantage plan, again, offered by private and companies. Part C combines, combines Part A, Part B, Part D, and it may offer some additional benefits not covered by original Medicare. Does anyone know what part, if there's a cost to part A or part B? Well, I'm gonna tell you, there is. <laughs> uh, Medicare part A, and I'm gonna go back just one step there. Uh, there we go. Okay, Medicare part A, if you work 10 years or longer, it's provided to you at no cost, okay? If you um, did not work 10 years, it'll cost you probably around $400 a month to get part A, and that's your hospitalization. Part B, this year, 2021, the cost is 148.50, and it's driven by your income. So if your income uh, for a combined couple is over $170,000 a year, you will pay an additional $58 for part B, okay? And it goes all the way up to, to millionaires. Um, so those are kind of what part A and part B cost, okay? Part A and part B basically only, only covers about 80%. So that's why you wanna look at adding a supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan, okay? Uh, these are just the eligibility requirements, 65 years or older, six, uh, under 65 with a disability or you're a US citizen or a, a legal resident alien who had, I'm sorry, a resident who has lived in the United States at least five consecutive years, okay? So you have to qualify before you can do it. Um, initial enrollment period. This is what most people turning 65 get a little confused about. It's a seven month, month long period. It includes the, your 65th birthday month plus three months before and three months after. Now, if your birthday begins on the the um, first of the month, you get an extra month to choose, okay? Um, don't let it get you confused. It's, it's, it's very straightforward. Always remember, 
three months before, the month of, and three months after. Plenty of time to get in there without any penalties, and we'll go into penalties later, okay? Um, you may also, um, in your initial period, you may also join a Medicare Advantage program or a prescription drug plan. Although you're not required to enroll a part in Part D, which is the prescription plan, see that little note there? 1% of the average monthly premium, which is 3330, uh, you will pay for each month you delay. So if you delay 10 months, you're gonna pay 1% of the $30.30 for the rest of your life, okay? So it's very important to make sure you sign up for Part D, all right? Also, Part B has a, a, a penalty if you don't sign up or have credible coverage, okay? And, it, and it's a misnomer. You don't have to sign up for Medicare Part B at age 65 you don't have to get a prescription plan at age 65. Every, a lot of people tell you that there are penalties for those. However, if you have credible coverage, you're working and you have credible coverage and all credible coverages, it says it has to equal or be better than what Medicare offers, okay? Most of your employer plans do offer credible coverage. So I, I just sat with a gentleman the other day, actually did a Zoom with him and he is 69 years old. He finally decided he wanted to retire and he was very nervous about paying a penalty. And after we got done, he goes, oh, there's no penalty. I said, no, we just have to show um, proof that you had credible coverage. So that, that's a misnomer out there. The other thing before I go too far along is I, I don't want people to listen to their mom, listen to their dad, their aunt, their uncle, their brother, their sister, their next door neighbor or the garage mechanic because every person on Medicare is an individual and it's done to suit your needs. Many um, couples come in and, and meet with me and they think they're, they have to get the same exact plan. That's so untrue. We're gonna tailor the plan to fit your needs, not your spouses, not your aunts, your uncles and so forth, okay? Um, there's a lot of experts out there because a lot of people have had Medicare for a long time but again, you you're, you're all are individuals and that's very important. Um, as we go along, you'll see, you wanna look at your doctors, you wanna look at your prescriptions and do you have any chronic illnesses? And that's gonna kind of determine what type of plan is best for you, original Medicare with a supplement or a Medicare Advantage plan, okay? We just went through and actually, I, it seems like it was yesterday, but it's already been three months, annual enrollment period runs every year between October 15th and December 7th. During the annual enrollment period, you can add, drop, switch any Medicare coverage you wish, okay? Medicare Advantage open enrollment period, which we're in right now, runs from January 1st to January 31st. If you're already in a Medicare Advantage plan member, you may disenroll from your current plan, either to switch to a different Medicare Advantage plan one time only, or go back to original Medicare. People go, well, why would they do that if, if open enrollment ended on the 7th? My plan starts January 1st. Um, these are for times where you say, oops, I picked the wrong plan. So they're giving you a do-over. They say between January 1st and 31st, if you pick the wrong plan, you have time to get it corrected, okay? The other thing to keep in mind that doctors come in and out of networks all the time. This just happened to one of my clients called me up said, Rick, I know we looked up doctors and so forth, and he was on the list and so forth, and I call him up to make an appointment January 1st, and they tell me they no longer accept that insurance. So there's a little bit of a problem with, with some things going on now, okay? Uh, special enrollment periods, you hear them referred to as SEPs, dependent upon certain circumstances, you may be able to enroll in a Medicare plan outside of the initial enrollment period. And down below are the, uh, are the differences. Um, retire and lose or, or lose your employer coverage, okay? Sometimes uh, employers will drop their coverage completely and that allows you to get a Medicare plan. If you move out, move out of a plan service area, this is important to understand. Medicare works by the state you live in and then the county that you live in as well. So in the state of Connecticut, if you're in Hartford County, some of those plans may not be offered to you in New London County and vice versa, okay? So you always wanna remember, 
it's a state, and then it's also uh, the county. Uh, you may qualify for extra help, and we'll cover that at the end of the, end of the toward the end here. So that's a special enrollment period. And if, if you get diagnosed with um, a chronic health condition, sometimes that's a special enrollment period as well, okay? Uh, Medicare supplements, or you hear referred to as Medi, Medigap sub, uh, plan sometimes as well. Remember that equals original Medicare, okay? So these are the different plans that are available in the state of Connecticut. And this looks, probably looks very confusing. If anyone wants this, a copy of this, please send me an email. My email is listed on the bottom of the screen. It's rick at moreandassociates.com. I'll be happy to forward this to you. Uh, if there's anything else you need to, I'll be able to, to be more than happy to forward things to you, okay? So if we look at this, the first three are under disabled people under age 65. These are the plans that are available and the check marks are what is covered. Okay, and if we look at anyone over 65, uh, Plan G, a high deductible Plan G, K, L, and M are all available in Connecticut. And they all work with different scenarios, as you can see here. Now, there may be someone on, on tonight's uh, Zoom that was born, uh, I'm sorry, who turned 65 prior to 2020. Well, you have an additional plan you can choose from, which is Plan F which covers 100% of everything except for foreign travel, okay? So you pay nothing on a plan F. Um, the CMS, the Centers for Medicare Services in their infamous wisdom decided that we don't want people to have 100% coverage because if they do, they go to the doctors for a hangnail. So what they did was they came up with this plan here, the plan G, and they say, you can't, you're not gonna get away with paying nothing now you're going to pay $203 for an annual deductible. However, after that, you're gonna be covered with for everything. So you have plan G, plan N and plan F. These are the three popular plans. Plan N, and you'll see as we go along, I'm gonna show you some comparisons on pricing. Plan N basically covers everything that plan G does with two exceptions. If you go to uh, your Part B coinsurance, Copay has to be covered. And if you go into the ER, you could have, you see it down here, it says plan in a $20 copay for specialist visits and up to a $50 copay for an ER visit if you're not admitted into the hospital. Okay? Very popular plan. I'll, I'll ask questions, but everybody's muted. If anyone has a question, please just ask, okay? You can unmute yourself and feel free to ask. All right, so this is the Medicare supplement cost comparisons. Um, it's kind of eye-opening when you start looking at this. Remember, you always have to have your Part B premium in place before you can buy a, a supplement plan or a Medicare Advantage plan. So let's look at the plan F that if you turn 65 prior to 2021, the best price of the state of Connecticut is $271 a month on top of your $148.50 that you're paying for your Part B. So a quick calculation is $3,252 a year. I'm, I'm gonna use this example through all three. It's just an example, part B deductible and F is zero. If you go to the doctor six times, it costs you nothing. Two trips to the ER, nothing. Zero copay and deductible. So this plan F covers 100%. And again, it's $271 a month, plan G you have to pay that $203 deductible. The cost, however, is down to $208 instead of $271 a month. Now these are monthly fees. So you can see the, the annual is $2,469. That's a premium savings of $783. Not bad to have to pay that one deductible a year. I have clients who have this plan and they never go to the doctors and guess what? It, you could chalk the $208 on top of that $783 because that's just a savings for you. So again, using that same example, your Part B deductible would cost $203. Six office visits would be zero. Two emergency room visits would be zero. You just have to pay the 203 deductible. The savings over Plan F is $580 a year. So again, that's pretty significant. 
Plan N is the other popular one. Um, you do pay the $203 deductible. You have up to a $20 copay for specialist visits, up to $50 copayment for emergency room visits if you're not admitted. Um, cost for this is roughly $169. So $2,028 a year. Premium savings over Plan F is $1,200. Over Plan G, it's $441. Back to the same example, Part B deductible, 203, six doctor visits, 120, two ERs. So you're gonna pay $423, um, but your savings over Plan F is still $801 and savings over Plan G is 221. So you can see, you gotta kind of pick and choose what the best plan is for you. Very, very important. Some of the advantages of Medicare Advantage programs, uh, a high member satisfaction, 24 million people are enrolled in Medicare Advantage plans as of February of 2020. 93% satisfaction uh, among seniors with the Medicare Advantage plan, 25% less spent on healthcare than original Medicare. So that's kind of cool. Um, some of the advantage um, you can see here, Original Medicare, if you look, preventative services, coverages of medical care, like doctor's visits, hospitals, they're both covered, okay? Uh, however, Original Medicare does not cover prescription plans, does not cover routine vision, routine hearing or hearing aids, and it limits, um, there's no protection on the maximum amount you can pay out of pocket, uh, where the Medicare Advantage plans do. The other interesting thing is that CMS wants you to sign up for the Medicare Advantage programs. So if you have a Medicare supplement plan, you're gonna always show your Medicare card, your Medicare supplement card, and also a um, prescription card. So right now, if you have a supplement plan and original Medicare, CMS has to execute everything, pay doctors and hospitals and so forth. It's a lot of, it's a lot of paperwork. They're not used to doing it. And guess what? It costs the taxpayers a lot of money. So what they do is they offer, they, they authorize people to companies, large insurance companies to offer Medicare Advantage plans. And everyone pays that 148.50. CMS says, okay, Mr. Insurance Company, we'll send you that 148.50 from each of our clients. And we're also gonna send you a couple hundred dollars more each month as well. And we want to just walk away from this. We want you to administer everything. However, you must provide at least the minimum of what Medicare does. Okay? So that's the catch. It covers everything that original Medicare does. And then it also offers some other plans. Again, some of the things you need to, need to know about Medicare Advantage programs. Remember, we talked about it. You have to cut. always have your Part B in place. Medicare Advantage has you covered. Joining a Medicare Advantage plan may affect your current coverage, okay? It's best to use the networks, okay? There are two types of Medicare Advantage plans. Actually, there's more, but in Connecticut, the predominant two are HMOs, which are health maintenance organizations, and they have very strict networks. That's why it's very important to look at your doctors, make sure that they, they accept your plan. If they don't accept your plan, your plan is no good to you, okay? So that's very important. Um, and then they have what are called PPOs, with it, which are preferred provider organizations. They have in-network benefits and out-of-network benefits. And obviously, it gives you a lot more flexibility, but you're always going to be better off using best uh, than in-network doctors because they're going to save you the most amount of money. Uh, you may qualify for financial assistance, and we'll go into that in more detail. Um, if you roll in part D late, remember you may have to pay that 1% penalty. Uh, Medicare supplement insurance or Medigap policies, they're not in Medicare, Medicare Advantage plans. Don't get them confused. Uh, and it's very easy to confuse things in this, this, this environment. Um, you always wanna keep your Medicare ID cards handy. Uh, Medicare Advantage offers the same protections as original Medicare. That's always important to understand. Um, and you have a built-in financial safety net with Medicare Advantage plans. 
Prescription drug coverage, this is its own beast, I'll, I'll tell you. It's very confusing, so bear with me. I'm gonna run through this rather quickly. Um, what you need to know, there are different payment stages. You have an annual deductible, an initial stage, coverage gap, which people refer to as the donut hole, and then catastrophic coverage. Basically what they're saying, you're gonna pay your annual deductible and it's up to $445 to plan, depending on your plan um, this year. Uh, so you pay, it, you pay that 100%. Um, I'm sorry. Uh, initial coverage pay, you pay a copay insurance. The plan pays the balance of the coinsurance. And this can actually run you up to $4,130. Coverage gap, it can run up to $6,500. You're going to pay 25% of the drug cost. 5 to 75% will be covered by the plan. And you could come out with another $6,550 um, out of pocket. Catastrophic coverage, 370 and 920. Um, every year, these reset January 1st, okay? So that's a good, that's the good, the bad, and the ugly on prescription plans. A couple other quick notes. Total drug costs is what you pay for prescription drugs each year, plus what your plan pays and does not cover your premium, okay? So if you hear people talking about total drug costs, it's what you pay plus what your uh, company pays. Out of pocket, this is more of a what you want to look at. Total out of out of pocket is what you pay for prescriptions, drugs, including your deductible discounts paid. And while you're in the donut hole, does not include what your plan, your plan pays or your premium. Okay. Extra help, this is what they talk about extra help. Um, in the state of Connecticut, we have the best Medicare savings plan in the United States. These income limits are in effect at from March 2020. March 2021, we'll have new figures to work with. But right now, the limits stand if you're single and you make less than 2000 gross, less than $2,245.04, you qualify for what is called a qualified Medicare beneficiary. It covers your Part B premium. It helps with your co-pays and it reduces your prescription costs to 370 and 920. A couple could make up to $3,032.07. I keep putting the, the seven cents and the two cents in and let me explain why I, I spell it out like this. It's a hard line drawn in the sand. If you income and you're married goes to $3,032.08 you no longer qualify for this plan. Once you have the plan, you have it for an entire year and they look at it annually every year whenever it started. And um, sometimes they automatically renew you. Other times you have to fill out documentation. So the second plan, you see the income goes up a little bit, but you lose that Part B premium. I'm sorry, it pays the Part B premium. And um, this is a typo right here. It does not cover Medicare, these medical co-pays. Either does this. Wow, look at the two typos. <laughs> Got to get those out of there for next one. I do apologize. It does not cover Medicare medical co-pays on the SLMB or the ALMB, um, but they all cover your Part B premium and they all help lower your prescription costs to 370 and 920. That's huge. There is no donut hole if you, you qualify for extra help. What's very important to look up here, income limits are effective, no asset limits, no estate recovery. That's huge. Other states, other states in the United States look at your assets and they will recover some, um, some benefits from your uh, estate. So in Connecticut, we got the best in the United States. They did try instituting asset limits um, Three years ago, there was a total uprising and they immediately took it back away and said, we'll fund it all the way. So hopefully that'll be there for a while. Um, again, prescription drug coverage. I mean, what you wanna do is make sure you have a, a carrier that gives you a large network of pharmacies. You know, any one that supports national chains like Walgreens, CVS, uh, well, I used to say Rite Aid, but they're gone. Um, 
you can pick up anywhere in the United States. Okay, so that's important. Uh, save with this is something that if you are on maintenance drugs such as uh, blood pressure, cholesterol, things like that, you can actually save money by having it mailed directly to your house. Some of the big chains are now allowing you a discount on a 90 day supply as well. Um, again, remember I mentioned earlier that we wanna look at your prescriptions because they all have tiered formula, formularies. And if your drugs don't fit into the formularies, you need to look at a different carrier. That's very important. But all, all the formularies have five different tiers and it's important that you make sure those tiers are gonna work for your prescriptions. Sorry, I'm losing my, my voice. <clears throat> Excuse me one second. Okay, so prescription again, prescription drug coverage, sometimes you'll be asked to do a step therapy, which uh, can help lower your cost and your drugs. Some prescriptions, especially controlled narcotics, have drug uh, quantity limits, okay? You're not going to walk out with 90 Percocets. It's just not going to allow you to do that. Maybe 10, 14, okay? And it's all for your protection. Some plans will, you have to get prior authorization on prescriptions, Okay. And we'll go, we, if you have questions on that, please call me, text me, whatever. We'll go through it. Um, you can ask for exceptions. If you need a drug that's not currently covered by your plan, you can ask. Um, not saying it's going to be accepted, uh, but we've been able to win a lot of cases for our clients. Okay. Uh, coverage decisions. It, again, it, you got to look at this. Is your doc, if your doctor has submitted an exception request on your behalf, Generally, they will make a decision with 70, within 72 hours. You can ask them to exp expedite it um, if your doctor believes your health is at risk, okay? Why more in associates? Um, I'm gonna go through this quickly. We've got more than 30 years in the Medicare healthcare community. Uh, more people choose more associates because to be their local partner, our clients become clients for life always available to answer questions regarding your plans and a reminder of annual enrollment, enrollment period, AEP. Um, and you have your promise and commitment that will help you live a healthier, healthier life, okay? I'm always here to personally, to help you through. Um, I know the area, I know the products and it's important that you, you do that. Um, I've had clients come into our Potential clients come into my house. Well, I can do it myself. Is that's great? You can. Um, however, always keep in mind that anyone who's Medicare certified to do the plans um, has to go through training annually. You have to score 90s or better, um, or you can't represent those companies any longer. And it's every each individual licensed person. Okay. Um, again, here's my contact information. Very quiet crew. I thought I'd get some questions, but that's okay. Uh, if you have them, you can email, email them to me. You can text them to me. All the information is there. Okay. Ann, any questions? Um, yeah. Well, I, my question was because the rumor was a, went around that once you turned 65 that you had to go on Medicare. Yeah. Um, no, that's, that's, a, that's a misnomer. I mean, most people, when they turn age 65, will sign up for the Medicare Part A because most people have worked 10 years and there's no cost, okay? And now you're in the system, okay? Now, if you're, if you're turning 65 and you've already turned on your social security check at age 62, you're automatically gonna be enrolled into, oh. to part A and part B. It will automatically come out of your social security check. If you're not receiving your social security check and you want part A and B, put into place and you're not like, I use myself. I just turned on at um, 65 and a half. I just got Medicare Advantage plan. Um, I'm not taking my social security check. So I was asked, and this is everyone's asked to pay quarterly for part B and you have to pay it in advance. They don't let you go behind. They always want it in advance because guess what? If you don't pay it, they're gonna drop you. Okay, so you're going to pay your quarterly in advance until you get your Social Security check. Once you turn on your Social Security check and you have to turn it on at this point uh, by age 70, um, 
and then they will automatically take it right out. Okay, that's a great question though about 865. And as long as you have credible coverage, and again, credible coverage is just what, as long as it meets or exceeds what Medicare offers, okay? Most employer plans do that, especially if it's an employer above 20, okay? All right, any other questions, guys? All right, then I'm gonna, I thank you all for attending. Um, again, if you have questions, email me, text me. I'd be more than happy uh, to help anyone.